Can we improve a popular YouTuber's Things 3 setup? That's the question we're gonna ask today. And in case you're new, my name is Peter, and I've been teaching people how to use the popular task management app Things 3 for years now. I've had a bunch of private coaching clients. I've had over 600 people enrolling in my paid Things 3 course, and I've taught over 100,000 people here on YouTube right now. So I get really excited when I see people using Things 3 on YouTube. But I also get sad when I see people using Things 3 and not using its full potential. So the other day I was browsing YouTube and I saw a very popular YouTuber do a walkthrough of her Things 3 setup. And let's just say there's some things to improve. So in this video, we're gonna go play that video of her showing her Things 3 setup. And I'm gonna give you my thoughts on how she could use Things 3 better. Now, this YouTuber is Sarah Dichi. We're here on her, her YouTube page. Her videos are fantastic. I love them. She's, she seems great. We have never connected, but she seems great. Really, I you know watch her videos. I watch some of her videos. They're really, really cool. She seems to have a fun personality, great production value, all that stuff. It's just that her Things 3 setup could be a little bit better. Um, I actually emailed her privately and offered to do a video in which I um, help her improve her Things 3 setup. So Sarah, if you're watching this, my offer still stands. Let's do that video together and I'll help you out. Uh, but until that time, let's go over her Things 3 setup and I'll show you how it could be better and you can learn how to make your own Things 3 setup better as well. Okay, let's do this. So it wasn't until I did that in the physical that I was like, wow, let's go back to the Things app. So I first downloaded it on my- All right, actually we gotta, we gotta go right back there. What are we looking at here? We're looking at a today view that has, what is this, like 20 tasks? And then I'd organize it anyway. So that's, that's my first impression. That's a lot, but let, let's give her some time to talk. In the physical that I was like, wow, let's go back to the Things app. So I first downloaded it on my phone and now uh, I have it as a Mac app. So I had to buy it separately. Okay, that's good. She got Things 3 on her phone and her Mac app. I know she has an iPad, so hopefully she has it on her, on her iPad as well. But it is just, it's super handy. So um, this is left over from when I used it probably like two or three years ago. So it's kind of funny because I have like old projects. Like Ah, so this is something that I often see in my coaching clients, old projects. And so here's the thing. If you have stuff in your task manager that's been sitting there for years, it's just cluttering up, you know, the view and it's taking up space that it doesn't need to be spa uh, that it doesn't need to be taken up both in your things three, but also in your brain. Cause every time you're looking at it, you're seeing all that old stuff and it's getting in the way. We need to get rid of some of those old tasks. Let's see what else she has to say. Like switchboard. Nope, this inbox, basically I have a lot of random things to do that. Wow, that is a big inbox. I, I should probably look back on, but I need to go through all these and delete, but. Yes, she does. <laughs> so the way that I recommend doing this is having a weekly review. In a weekly review, you do a couple of things. And I actually have a free weekly review cheat sheet. Also one specific to things three, if you wanna check that out, link is in the description below the video. I do my weekly review on Sundays. And what do I do? I just go through all my inboxes, email inbox, physical inbox, things three inbox, and just clear everything out and organize it into the right category. I go through all of my areas, all of my projects to make sure that everything's up to date, that there's not old stuff in there that I no longer want to do. And then I also look ahead at what's coming up, you know, what's coming up in the next two weeks or so, what events, what deadlines, et cetera, et cetera, just to make sure that everything's set up. This takes me maybe half an hour to do. Um, sometimes a little bit longer, sometimes it takes me an hour. And I do that on Sundays. Super helpful. Doesn't seem like Sarah has anything like that if she has tasks in there that are two years old. So that's probably the number one thing I would recommend for her is start doing a weekly review and do some basic maintenance on your Things 3 setup. I basically just started with the today view and that's everything that I have to get done today. Hold on, I gotta clean this up real quick. This is embarrassing, see? I okay, she's aware that she has to clean this up at least. <laughs> I do things, but I don't check them off and that's the funnest part. Why don't I remember to do that? The coolest part about this app- She's great though, right? I think she's great. Two is you can have to-dos within a to-do. See how I did that? Like it collapses, but you double click, so. All right, so here's something that I find very interesting. But by the way, I also love that there are checklists inside of to-dos and things three, but here's something interesting. See how this task reads office pickup. I think probably Sarah knows what this means. Probably it means pick up some items from the office. I always suggest writing tasks and starting them with a verb. So in this case, I might say, pick up items from the office because yeah, if you're writing a task down today to do it later today, 
you'll probably remember what it was anyway, unless you're really busy, really frantic, overwhelmed or whatever. But if you're writing down a task now and you end up getting to it two or three months from now, you may not remember what you meant. So always try to write a task by starting with a verb and being as descriptive as possible. And don't keep it vague like office pickup or like washer. <laughs> what about the washer, right? You got check marks within a check mark and then you can also put more notes here. Um, that's really cool. So basically the method to the madness is when you have a to-do in your head, oh my gosh, I have to do that. Put everything in your inbox. This is where you- No, 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 don't put everything in your inbox. Okay, I'm gonna give her a couple seconds to see, see if she get, comes back to that. You start from, right? So you put everything into your inbox. There's a lot of stuff here, again, because this is from past Sarah. It's really weird to like see Sarah three years ago and what was what was on her mind, right? So you put- Okay, if you want to see what was on your mind three years ago, there's a view for that. Let's, let's actually take a look at my own things three. Um, there's a view for that, and it's called the logbook. So if you go into the logbook, that's where you can see what you've been doing in the past. You know, so I could scroll way down this and see what I was doing three years ago. Um, but the inbox, look at my inbox. This is my inbox. So uh, let's look at Sarah's inbox again. This is Sarah's inbox. So what's she doing wrong here? The problem is... Your inbox is not the place to keep all the things you could potentially be doing. You can see on the screen, there's an anytime thing over here. So if I go into my own things three, the anytime view is where you go and look in the morning or the night before, whenever you're planning your day or your week, and you're like, hey, what do I want to do today? What are all the things I could be doing? Let's pick some of the things from this list and then assign them to today. By using the inbox for that, she's kind of ignoring the fact that there's an anytime view. And she's making the inbox less useful because it's so cluttered. So let's see what else she has to say about that. Everything in the inbox. And then when you want to make it actionable and you're like, I'm ready to do this today, right? You can either assign it to a calendar date. You can click here and it'll pop up in your today inbox on that assigned date. Or if you're like, I need to move this to today, you click the today button or you star it on your phone. It's a little bit faster on your phone. And it okay. It's true, it does work that way, but don't leave everything in the inbox. So one of the things I do during the weekly review is I'll take all of these tasks that are in the inbox and I'll assign them to the, to the right category. For example, yesterday, one of the people who is one of my students actually emailed me and said, hey, you know, I know you're a Paul Simon fan. Um, have you heard that there are these audio conversations between Paul Simon and Malcolm Gladwell kind of about Paul Simon's career? And I'm like, That's, that sounds fantastic. Like he's my favorite artist. You know, I would love to listen to that. So that's something that I quickly wrote down. And I added it to my inbox. And during my weekly review, I'm going to see this and I'm going to drag this into the right area. So for example, this would go in my fun and trips area. So I drag it over here. Now, if I go to any time, it still shows up under the fun and trips area, um, but it's no longer clogging up my inbox. Okay. So the inbox isn't really meant for that. And once you drag something into a specific area, it goes out of the inbox. So let's Let's go back, but just so you know, that's a much better way of doing things because then the inbox really stay. Think of having a physical inbox, right? You will not just keep piling up things into your physical inbox. Every now and then you're going to take the time to put the letter. Let's say this was like 30 years ago. You're going to take your time and you're going to put all those letters that you got into the right file folders in your filing cabinet that would sit behind you or next to you or something like that, right? That's how that's meant to work. It moves it to your today inbox. So the inbox is like everything Today is... All right, I also want to talk a little bit about how she's got her today view going because she's got like six tasks here in her today view, which is you know fine. Like however many tasks you have in her today view, <laughs> before her list was a bit bigger and it was a little excessive. She hasn't grouped them in any way. And I see that she also hasn't assigned these to any area. So she's really missing out on one of the main features of Things 3, which is that it has an excellent organization feature that you can put things in areas and projects that's what I've got going on here. I've got my admin and finances area. I've got coaching and courses, fun and trips, health, home, learning and planning, my podcast, relationships, Toastmasters, my public speaking club, uh, wishes for like birthday wishes and reverse wishes and stuff, YouTube, and I've got a templates folder. And so I would put, you know, put every single task inside an area or make it a project that lives on an area. For example, a project might be I'm building this new office slash studio that I'm recording in, it's not done yet. Um, so that is a project. So it looks like this. Um, and you put tasks in there. So because Sarah has not assigned her tasks, and maybe if I make this bigger, you can see better. If she has not assigned her tasks to any um, projects or areas, they're all just getting to sit in the inbox like this. Now, for me, they are sorted by area. You could also do it differently. If you open your things preferences, 
uh, you can uncheck this box, group to do's in the today list by project or area, but it'll still show you which project or area it's for. So this is probably a better choice for her, um, organizing things a little bit better. I prefer this view. Anyway, back to the video. Hey, I gotta get this done today. Upcoming is really handy because it coordinates with your- What is this? What is this? The empty upcoming view. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Calendar. This is what is so handy. When I wake up every morning, the first thing I check is my calendar. And then if I go yeah. to the Things app and I look at my to-dos, I see my to-dos for today, but then at nice. the top is where it pulls in the information from my calendar and it keeps all of my uh, calendar dates up above so I can keep that in mind. And having that, that, that's actually the biggest thing that I did not appreciate three years ago because I probably didn't use my calendar. Now I use gcal for like everything and apple cal or whatever having those two things in the same place is actually clutch for me so the the fact that it integrates with my calendar is is a big deal i still need to set it up on my mac you're anytime yes she still needs to set it up on her mac so that's what's going on so let me show you what it looks like for me um this is what it looks like when you actually set it up um your calendar events will kind of show on a specific day at the top so for example on monday 11 30 i got a haircut 3 p.m i'm meeting my trainer for some lifting and I also have to prepare for a coaching call with one of my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients um, Monday at the latest. I may end up doing that Sunday, for example. Might be, actually, no, you know what? I, should, mm, I don't know, we'll see. Um, so maybe Sarah just has to set that up and maybe on her phone that's set up better. And you'll also see if you've got any events today, then they'll show up under your today view as well. Um, you can set this all up in, by things, preferences, and then you can go to calendar right there. You can set that all up. Okay, so we'll, we'll chalk that up too. She hasn't set that up on her Mac yet view is basically your today views but then also the ones that we just dragged over that are anytime it's chill right but then it also puts your different project to do's here um, that you basically see on the left side of things we'll get to that in a second and then you have okay okay so there's a couple things we got to talk about here actually i'll make it big again so it's easier for you to see um the anytime view let's just pop back to that okay so it sounds like she has some stuff in the anytime view however those 72 items in the inbox really need to get processed so sarah do a weekly review you're gonna love it um in addition okay anytime view here is fine one of the things about the anytime view is you want to make sure there's not too much stuff in there so the anytime view is really meant for you to sit down and be like okay what should i work on next let's look at the anytime view what do i've got going on in there um I'll pick some tasks. Those are the things that I'm gonna work on next. So the longer the list of tasks you have in your anytime view, the harder it is to choose because the more tasks you have to choose from, the harder it is to choose, right? Um, so we wanna keep that a little bit tidy and use the someday feature. So Sarah's using the someday feature as well in things, which means something that you're gonna work on someday. I always tell people, are you probably not gonna do this in the next two weeks? Assign it to someday. So that way, anything that's in the someday bucket won't show up under any time. So, that way, if I go to my anytime view, there's a reasonable amount of tasks. I mean, there's a couple, you know, I got a bunch of projects going on, but um, there's a reasonable reasonable amount of tasks for me to review. Whereas if I go into someday, this is a bunch of stuff that I'm not necessarily going to do anytime soon or the way that I define it in the next two weeks. Um, we also wanna talk about some of the things that she's got going on on the side. Her organization of areas and projects could definitely be better. Some of these things are not really projects, for example. You see, so there's these things, those are areas, and then there's these circles. Those are projects. Projects are meant to be things that are one-off and that finish at some point. So for example, if we go back here, my build new office slash studio project, you can see it's kind of part of the way filled in. And when I finish it, it's gonna be all of the way filled in. Because at some point, this office is gonna be done. I'm gonna be done with it. Um, and then I'm gonna check this project off and it's gonna to totally disappear. For her, she's got something like video ideas. That's never going to be done. You know, you're, that's just something you use on an ongoing basis. You're always going to have video ideas. So that should not be a project. In this case, it should actually not even be inside things three. I see people doing this a lot where they just have lists of ideas or shows to watch or books to read inside things three. But things three is not meant for that. Things three should have actionable things. If you just have a list of things to remember for later or whatever, put them in a notes app. Apple Notes is fine. Apple Notes is great. Put it in Apple Notes, you know, your video ideas. Or put it in Notion. That's what I do or whatever. Um, try to keep it out of things three because then it will not show up in your anytime view. It will not clutter that up. Makes it easier to decide what you're going to work on today. And let's see what she has to say about the someday view. Someday, this is just another to-do list with your someday big goals that you can later then mm -hmm. grab and drop wherever you want them. Move them today, move them to inbox. Um, I would maybe move it to the inbox when you're thinking about getting it done, right? No, 
Don't move it to the inbox when you're thinking about getting it done. Don't ever move things back to the inbox. The inbox is where you put stuff before you've had a chance to organize it. After you organize it, it's gonna sit either inside an area directly or inside a project in an area. Your logbook is really cool because you can see when you checked things off. This is really great to be like, I've been productive. Yes, the logbook is cool. Uh, you know, just looking at some of our tasks, um, some of them are okay. Uh, nicely formatted, like check if office payments are going through. Other things are a bit confusing. Laptop Etsy handmade. What does that mean? <laughs> Probably she knew it at the time, but again, this is the type of task that a couple of months later, you're gonna be like, wait, what? I completely forget what that was about. So if you could phrase it more specifically, helps you remember it later. Good job. Or if you had some important information stored in that to do, you can still access it. And then over here you have- True, you can access, if I go to the logbook, you can access notes um, for things in your logbook. For example, here's a YouTube video I wanted to watch and I put the link to the video in the notes and that's sitting in my logbook so I can look it back. But don't rely on this for long-term storage of things. Things 3 is really not meant for you to store things for a long time, okay? So if you have notes that you want to be able to keep accessing indefinitely, put them in Apple Notes or whatever other notes app you want to use, not inside Things 3. It's just really not designed for that. And that, that could break at some point, like I'm warning you. Have groups. Now this is really cool because it's just like, it's kind of like Notion. Where mm, they're areas, not groups, but <laughs> nitpicking. Notion is like pages inside pages inside pages. Things is to-dos inside to-dos inside to-dos. Mm, not really. That's that's the way it works in some other apps like Todoist, for example, but in things that are actually a very clear structure. There's areas. Areas can have projects and projects can have to-dos. Areas can also directly have to-dos. Let me show you. Let me show you. So if I go to my home area, we've got tasks sitting directly in the home area, like replace the bathroom scale battery. I've also got a project sitting inside the home area. Okay. And so um, there's a clear hierarchy of area project to do. So Sarah Peachy, we can uncollapse this here and we have micro Instagram posts, video ideas. And as you can see, how many you have checked off basically gives you the status um, with that pie over here with the circle. And then when you click on. So she knows that the circle shows you the status of her project, but since these are projects for her that are gonna be ongoing, it'll never be finished. So she can never, next, never actually check them off and will never fully complete the pie the bigger folder, Sarah Peachy, it basically has the number of to-dos inside of it. So um, it's just it's just really cool. So the Things app is really just for me and it helps me organize my thoughts, but as you can tell, it's pretty powerful if you wanna use it um, for bigger projects. But really, everything I do lives up here. Inbox today, upcoming anytime, someday, and then that, that you know collaboration with my calendar is huge. I really don't use um, all of these down here. Okay, so you know, Again, I'm super happy that Sarah is using Things 3. There's so much room for improvement, I think, in her setup and perhaps in your setup as well. If you do want to learn how to set up Things 3 properly, check out my course. It's called Organize Your Life with Things 3. The link is in the description below the video. Hey, if you found this useful or entertaining, hit that like button, leave a comment, let me know, signal to me somehow that I should make more of these videos. I might also do some things where I ask some of my students or some of my fans on YouTube to send me their Things 3 setup so I can critique that. So if you find that interesting, definitely let me know and I'll consider that. In the meantime, have a great rest of your day. Ciao.